I'm Jason Sukamel. There's Cole Patterson. Cole, a bit of a bittersweet crew cast. Okay, let's just let the cat out of the bag. People probably, a lot of people are probably aware, but Cole is no longer on the Orange Blood staff. Uh, sad day for us or sad week for us, but uh, proud of Cole and happy for Cole. Cole is now the regional analyst. Cole, what states do you cover? It's Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Oklahoma, what others? Arkansas. Arkansas. Okay. So he's covering all those states for rivals.com as a regional analyst. So uh, kudos to Cole, but um, Cole's nice enough to still join us on the crew cast this week. He thinks people we're going to let him get away and like, he's never going to have to do these again, but Cole, I'm still going to bring you in from time to time, dude. We're going to, yeah, I'm more than happy to join. Well, good. We're going to, yeah, you say that now, but I want to keep that fresh <laughs> face here uh, on these crew cast videos, but Hey, before we Cole, it's a huge official visit weekend for Texas. Uh, you and I will be covering that. In addition to whatever new chores you've got, we'll be uh, working on some of these official visitors this weekend. But before we start talking about them, obviously you want to promote our sponsor there, Prime Shrimp, uh, primeshrimp.com. Use that promo code ORANGEBLOODS30, ORANGEBLOODS30, to get 30% off of your uh, orders of six or more units of Prime Shrimp. And also, of course, subscribe to our channel, like this video, get the notifications, do those things uh, that help us grow the channel. So, Cole. I think I've got 23 guys on my list, like confirmed guys, and we're trying to reconfirm with some guys to make sure they're still coming in. But we're going to just blow through them, dude. And like, this is going to kind of be rapid fire. We'll, we'll talk about each guy that's coming in. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> just kind of work our way, I say down the list, but I'm actually scrolling up the list. So there's no rhyme or reason to this order. I don't know why our visit list has them on orangebloods.com in this order, but uh, let's just jump right into it. I'm going to start with a guy. Uh, you're more familiar with than I am, and we're trying to confirm if he's still coming in. But PJ Woodland, uh, cornerback out of Mississippi, any kind of thoughts, Cole, on PJ? Yeah, for sure. He's he's a guy that visited Austin back in I guess that was March when the overtime was down in Round Rock. He stopped by campus. Bo Davis, you know, he offered him at his school. I think that was back in January. Um, yeah, really athletic player can play receiver or DB. He said they want him at corner. He's kind of know Terry Joseph really well. Um, but he, he dropped his top two pretty recently, Mississippi State and LSU, and just talked to him. He said it was, you know, his top two, but he wasn't really shutting things down necessarily. He's still open to hearing some pitches from schools. You know, Texas and Texas A&M are among those schools he's still listening to. Um, yeah, a very versatile player, could play receiver or corner, but it sounds like Texas does want him in the, in the secondary. Yeah, and like I said, he's one that we need to double confirm uh, if he's still coming in. But moving down the list, Cole, up the list, uh, the only commitment, the only Texas commitment that will be in, Michael Curran, the punter. And I find it interesting he's coming in this weekend. You know, the 23rd next weekend is kind of their bigger weekend, if you will. Um, but maybe they just, I don't know, maybe there's a rhyme or reason. I'll, I'll check with Michael uh, this weekend. But uh, Michael Curran, the punter out of Florida, will be in town. So he's never even, I don't think he's ever been to Austin. You know, he committed – Sight unseen. So this will be a new experience for for him to come in. Uh, <laughs> what's that? You're all over that commitment. <laughs> yeah, the, the Michael Curran commitment. That's right, man. Um, all right, Cole. Uh, next one up, a guy that I haven't talked to. I actually DM'd with him a bit this week just to confirm that he is still coming in. But um, I, Isaiah, and I don't know if it's Faga, F A G A, uh, defensive tackle. It's interesting. He's out of Alabama mm -hmm. and he's committed to Utah. He's been committed, I'm looking. He's been committed to Utah since December of last year, but he's been to Texas, I think, twice on unofficial visits. He'll be coming in this weekend on an official visit. He's kind of said, like, hey, Texas, Alabama, those are the only two that he's considering outside of his Utah commitment. So right. the dude keeps coming back, man. So that's, you know, I guess that's a yeah. pretty good pretty good sign there. Um, kind I'm going to uh, skip one. Uh, Cole, I know it's a guy that you're pretty familiar with, so I'll let you take over. Uh, Jordan Ross, the uh, defensive lineman. Yeah, yeah. Um... And Jordan, he's another defensive lineman that Bo Davis is all over. Um, it seems like, you know, he's taking full advantage of the move to the SEC. You know, he's out of out of, out of Alabama, a guy that Bo Davis really is really high on. So getting him, you know, it's going to be tough to pull him away. But getting him into Texas, at least getting him on for an official visit, shows that they're in the mix. So Bo Davis, once you get around him, you know, I think we were down there, what was that, a couple weeks ago, and he was driving these kids around his decked out uh, golf cart. <laughs> Once Bo Davis gets around defensive linemen, you know, it's Texas has a legit shot there. So big to get two D linemen from Alabama when you're talking about Fega as well. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm looking at Jordan Ross. He's already visited Georgia, 
Uh, already visited Florida. He'll be at Texas this weekend, of course, and then Tennessee. So pretty heavy hitters from one of the better players in the country, Rivals 100 player. Um, <clears throat> this one's kind of interesting. Be, uh, next one, Santana Wilson is out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, his dad, a Adrian Wilson, was an all-pro safety for the Cardinals, I want to say. A uh, really good football player, but he's a cornerback. Santana and Wilson is um, – a lot of Arizona State chatter, but I think, man, I've talked to Santana. I think Texas has a really good shot there, especially once they get him on campus this weekend. Uh, he does have Washington coming up uh, the following weekend, and he's already visited Arizona State. So Arizona State's kind of the buzz buzz team right now, but let's see after he comes to Austin this weekend. I could see Texas making a really strong impression on cornerback uh, Santana Wilson. Um, Cole, I'll let you, I've, I've communicated with uh, Blake Ivey. Uh, DM'd with them a little bit here and there, but uh, Blake Ivy, the big offensive lineman, will be in town. Kind of your thoughts on on Blake? And he's one of those offensive linemen that you know I've been. He wasn't there recently, but he seems like when Texas has a big recruiting event, more often than not, he'll show up either for an unofficial visit or for a game or anything like that. He's one of the top offensive linemen in the state, as as you mentioned. You know him and Michael Looney and uh, Daniel Cruz are among the guys that you know Kyle Flood really likes. You know, I think A and M's right up there with Texas, but. Getting him in for that official visit maybe can sway some things there. Yeah, I'm not sure where else he's visiting. I need to go through and kind of add those to his profile. But uh, next one up is Miles Davis, a safety out of Converse Judson. Um, kind of an interesting dynamic. I talked to Miles like shortly after Texas offered, and he kind of told me then, like, hey, it's Texas and Texas A&M. And he said probably he's favoring Texas. He did visit A&M recently unofficially. I think he's going back to A&M unofficially again um you know texas is obviously in the mix there but i'm kind of starting to hear and think that things maybe are trending a little bit towards a and m there so uh we'll see we'll see how that you know what miles davis has to say after this weekend big safety out of converse real quick, on, real quick on him i actually talked to somebody a source who knows him pretty well this week and he said uh, miles sees all the crystal balls flying in you know future cast for a and m and he thinks that's a little premature. You know, he said that Miles, he really liked his USC visit, or really likes his AM visit. So he's going to come off on a high and all of that. But he's told me that the source told me that Texas is very much in, in the mix there. That they make a big impression and they want to put it past Texas being the team to beat. So, you know, I think AM's in a good position. But I think Texas, if they push the right buttons, make him feel like a priority. Um, he, I think they can surge up to the top of the list. You know, he's. Also close with another Texas target, Freddie DeBo. So something to watch there. Another, yeah, another guy that will be in, and we'll talk about Freddie here in a bit. Yeah, uh, yeah. In talking to people that have talked to Miles, the USC visit did make a strong impression. Um, just I don't know. I don't know if I see him going that far away. I, just, when I talked to him, it kind of felt like a Texas Texas A and M battle, and uh, you know we'll see who gets the the last laugh there, so to speak. Uh, Cole, next up is a tight end out of <clears throat> Las Vegas, Bishop Gorman. So. I need this guy to commit to uh, to Texas so I can go to Las Vegas. My, my man, Reiner Swanson out of Laguna Beach, yeah. uh, he just committed to BYU, so he broke my heart a little bit. It's a true story. I was texting Reiner uh, last night, and I, I said, hey, dude, you know, is it, should I have a commitment story ready? He goes, no, nah, it's not going to be Texas. He told me off the record, and I said, you know what? I still may have to find a reason to come out to Laguna Beach. <laughs> Maybe He's he like, oh, might. Yeah. Maybe you know, Texas kind of in the mix and, you know. Yeah, like, like, hey, Ryan, are you having second thoughts? I'll get on the plane and come out <laughs> yeah. He's such a nice kid. He's like, yeah, please do. He's like, come on out, man. Gonna... <laughs> but uh, tight end out of Bishop Gorman in Vegas, uh, Elijah Lofton. Um, a guy that most people feel is probably Miami bound. He did visit Miami uh, last weekend. And even before that visit, all the buzz seemed to be on Miami, but – you know, Jeff Banks is a really good recruiter for Texas. Texas obviously has a need for multiple tight ends in this class. So we'll keep an eye on Elijah Lofton. Like I said, he'll be coming in from Vegas, so we'll see what, uh, how this visit goes. Um, <clears throat> Cole, this next guy <clears> – <throat> pardon me. Uh, this next guy I can't get hardly any information on. I can't get a phone number. I can't get him to respond to me. You know what? He's actually in your territory now, so um, – <laughs> You may have to see if you can work some magic, but Daniel Okoye yeah. uh, out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, he's homeschooled. So there's no coach. I'm sure you, know, you need to figure out like a trainer or somebody, just some point of contact for Daniel Okoye. But he's an intriguing guy, man. 6'5, yeah. 225. He's a Rivals 250 guy, homeschooled out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
Um, you know, he's got, I'm looking at his offer list, Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia. I mean, K-State, Miami, he's got a ton of them, man. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, uh, obviously Texas, Tennessee, Texas A&M. So um, really, really intrigued by him. I just can't seem to get him to respond yeah. to me. So the man of well, mystery. He really is. You know, just the throwing the homeschool factor, and he really is a man of mystery. We'll have to uh, find a way to get some updates on Daniel Okoye. Yeah, so uh, so you mentioned Freddie DeBose, the, the receiver. Um, he'll be in this weekend. Kind of what are you thinking on Freddie? Yeah, real quick, I was just saying, Tulsa probably isn't as attractive as Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> no, you get, you get to cover Daniel Okoye's yeah. commitment if he commits to Texas. So, I've actually, you know, I say that, and I've spent, cool, I spent about a month in Tulsa. Before I was at the Orange Bloods, really? I was with a magazine. They were based out of Tulsa. Okay. Their editor, the main editor quit. They're like, dude, we need you to fly up to Tulsa <laughs> and basically live here for like a month and a half. So, I spent a lot of time in Tulsa. I had a really good time in Tulsa, Oklahoma, believe it or not. But, there you uh, go. Maybe, maybe yeah. I'll still have some connections out that way. <laughs> oh, probably not. That was many, many moons ago, man. So, <laughs> it was like 25 years ago. But, um, yeah, so uh, Freddie DeBose will be coming in, the wide receiver, Cole. Kind of what are you thinking on Freddie, man? Yeah, I think we both are big fans of Freddie, you know, on the field and off the field. He has a good personality. He's another guy that, you know, he's either on the Texas campus or I think at the Under Armour camp, he was decked out in burnt orange. So oh, it seems yeah. like Texas is really high on his list. And, you know, I talked to a source in San Antonio down there this week, and they're saying, you know, UTSA laid the red carpet out for him. He's definitely listening to UTSA. Tennessee is another school he's going to officially visit that he likes a lot, but – what, what I was told is if Texas makes him the priority and, you know, makes that push for him and makes him feel wanted and the Longhorns going to be really tough to beat, you know, it'll be interesting to see where, where Chris Jackson sees him on the pecking order and all of that kind of stuff. But Freddie's a good player, obviously. You know, he's got a good offer sheet, um, runs tracks. So he's got the multi-sport background as well. But I'm a big fan of Freddie. I think Texas, if they make that push, it's going to be tough to beat. Otherwise, UTSA could actually be a team to watch there. Yeah, he did miss his in, most of his junior season, almost his entire junior season with a knee injury. But he's back. Like you said, he ran track uh, in the spring, um, ran really well, in fact. Uh, you know, Freddie's, like, first off, awesome kid. Like you and I said, we, you yeah. said we both love his personality. But every time I talk to Freddie, like, or I see him on Twitter, it's like he'll visit somewhere. He's like, best visit ever. And the next place, like, oh, my gosh, best visit ever. So, you know, the Tennessee visit, he did take a Tennessee unofficial visit. And just mm -hmm. based on his Twitter post love that one so and he's told me that this is going back about a month or so but he said tennessee was recruiting him more aggressively than any other school so uh we'll see i'm kind of like you i think if texas really pushes there uh they've got a really good shot um next up cole is a, a lot of these another arizona kid but at a desert edge which is right i had to look that up uh he's in goodyear arizona desert edge high school just outside of phoenix uh deshaun warner is a defensive end uh, I DM'd with him a little bit this week, just talking about his visit and hoping to catch up with him on, on Sunday after the visit. But um, he's actually, he's got a top four. Texas is in that top four and he's going to announce his decision. He's already said on July 1st. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that one. We'll have a much better handle obviously after this weekend when he gets to Austin uh, for a visit to kind of see where Texas fits in. Uh, next one, another West coast guy, uh, Kamori House is a linebacker out of St. John Bosco, the powerhouse program out there in California. Um, I talked to Kamori after Texas offered him pretty recently. This dude loves, loves, loves Texas. Like he told me he kind of grew up watching Texas, rooting for Texas. Uh, I talked to Adam Gornier, uh, national guy, West Coast guy too. Out, he's out in California. And he and I both seem to agree. I think Texas has a really good shot to land Kamori house. He's kind of a guy that nobody's really talking about that much, maybe a bit under the radar in terms of rankings. Although he is a four-star guy. Um, just not a lot of, you know, not a lot of chatter about Kamori house, but I think maybe uh, people need to start paying closer attention to him. Cause I think Texas has a really good shot there. Um, okay. Let me go down this list. Next up, Cole, uh, maybe you know more about this guy than I do, but it, He's tweeted out that he's coming, so we've got him on the list. But Malik Blockton is a defensive end, another Alabama kid. So Bo Davis hitting that region yeah. pretty hard. So what is that? Our third? Is that our third Alabama defensive yeah. line? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's. I mean, I I know of him obviously because Texas is recruiting him, but I don't know his story really well. If I'm being completely honest, uh, I need to 
looking like the Texas visit, the only one we've got in his database. So I can't even tell you exactly. He's been to Auburn a ton on unofficial visits for whatever that's worth. Uh, to the same school that Vice and Lane was, the offensive lineman that Texas was recruiting pretty hard last year. Mm -hmm. um, good, good program, but, yeah, there's another Alabama defensive lineman that Bo Davis really likes. I think, like I mentioned earlier, he's – Obviously, taking full advantage of the SEC move, you know, he, I think, uh, you know, this offseason we've lost track of how many guys he's offered in Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia. So, uh, definitely a guy there. But like you said, that, I think Pike Road, I believe, uh, it's kind of central south, maybe around, around Montgomery, I believe. So, not too far from Auburn. Like you said, he's been to Auburn a lot. So, probably the team to watch there. But like I said, if Bo Davis gets you on an official visit, you can't really count Texas out. Yeah, Bo certainly doesn't mind throwing a lot of lines in the water when it comes to recruiting, <laughs> man, especially in the, in the southeast. He already got a Aaron Bryan in the bow, so I guess he's kind of yeah. <laughs> wanting to extend, extend, extend even yep. more. Uh, Dontre Robinson is a big defensive tackle out of Orlando Jones High School. Uh, this is a guy that's he's been on several visits. Yeah, uh, I think he was recently at Florida, which most people seem to think Florida is maybe Texas's primary competition you know i've talked to dontre he's pretty open he, he did come to texas for an unofficial visit uh it was way back in january so it's been a while but i talked to him after that visit and he's like dude i loved it he's like i'm gonna try to come back as many times as i can well he hasn't been back since <laughs> but getting him on campus again is a big move for texas but you know he's the question there is hey can you get him away from the the southeastern schools in a school yeah. like He's a guy that I talked to when I went down to see Cedric Baxter last year, actually. He, uh, same Orlando area. They played against um, Payne Kirkland, actually, in the game I went to. So he said he's very familiar and has a good relationship with both Kirkland and, and C.J. Baxter. So it could, could be something that Texas has up their sweep. Yeah, I think they'll definitely – I'm sure they'll utilize those relationships this weekend. Um, next up, Cole, <clears throat> big offensive lineman. Out of California, one of the best players in the country, Brandon Baker, out of modern day, uh, arguably the best program in in, in the country, uh, top 25 player nationally. Most of the buzz there is with Oregon, Cole. Everybody seems to think Oregon's the runaway leader there. But, hey, you, you, know, you bring him in, you take your chances if you're Texas. He's been to Ohio State, uh, obviously Texas this weekend. He's got Georgia coming up. I mean, this guy is elite of the elite. Yeah. But, you know, hey – He's coming in for an official visit, so that shows you there's some interest in Texas. And he's been to Texas before. He's been there. He was at UT in April so uh, yeah. for the spring game. So um, Former teammates with Spencer Shannon. Yeah, so you got to figure Spencer Shannon maybe even be his, his uh, player host. I'm you know, not sure, but we'll see about that. But uh, tremendous player. But, yeah, it's going to be some pretty heavy competition. Most people still seem to think it's Oregon, uh, Ohio State kind of floating around there. But, you know, maybe Texas makes a, a strong enough impression this weekend to really – surge up the list for Brandon Baker. Um, Monte Whedon is a linebacker uh, out of D.C., um, Washington, D.C. I need to confirm with him. Someone said he might not be coming in, someone on our message board. So, um, you know, if Texas pushes there, I really like Texas's chances just after talking to him. And I don't think he has a – he's got a nice offer list, but he doesn't have the big power players really pushing that hard. So, he did come into Texas uh, in April for the spring game. He does have an offer. Uh, just not fully sure, if, you know, how active Texas is going to push there. And we, I, in fact, I need to check to see if he's coming in. I'll have an update on that in the war room. So uh, next up, Cole, I want to hear what you have to say about this one. Um, Aaron Hampton, uh, the kind of do everything guy and bounce around from school to school guy. But, uh, you know, Aaron's a really good player. But curious to hear what your thoughts on Aaron, because it seems like that one changes quite a bit. Yeah, for sure. I think it's been an Alabama-Texas battle, really, even before he decommitted from Texas back in, I guess mm -hmm. that was early winter. I can't remember when that was. <laughs> All the months are running together. He committed in November – or decommitted, excuse me, November 29th, yeah. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so like I said, all the months are running together. But, yeah, definitely it's, those are the two teams have always kind of been in the mix. You know, he really – tight relationship with Jalen Hill, who obviously chose Alabama over Texas. You know, he has good relationship with the Alabama staff. He just took his visit out to Tuscaloosa uh, this past weekend, um, or was that, you know, earlier this month, this past weekend or weekend before. But uh, obviously Texas getting him in the, in the boat or in the mix, kind of on an official visit, 
kind of getting him back in the class will be, you know, it's something to watch. You know, I think he really wants to play wide receiver, but he's always told me he's been Blake Gideon that's recruiting in the most, or at least he has the best relationship with him on the staff. You know, he likes Steve Sarkeesian as well. Um, you know, he's very difficult to read. You know, I think part of him does want to go to Alabama and part of him keeps bringing him back to Texas. He's already been in the class before. He's always – talked about talk, catching passes from Arch Manning in the offense. So um, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be a summer decision or if he could drag it all the way to signing day. But obviously there's some mutual interest if he's taking an official visit this weekend. Yeah, and like you said, he was just at Alabama last weekend. And he's proclaimed publicly those are his top yeah. two and final two. Um, I just don't have a read. I, I mean, I have people from Alabama asking me this week, like, hey, what's your read? What's your What are you hearing on Aaron Hampton? I was like, I don't have one. I'm not hearing a ton, to be honest with you, because I don't know what he's going to wind up doing. I mean, I did hear that Alabama, as you'd expect, the visit went very well, and Alabama loves him as a player. So Yeah, um, I know Alabama's high on him. and They might have a slight edge, but obviously going they're, – they're the ones coming off the official visit, so it could very well be right. Texas having this slight edge afterwards. He's definitely a wild card, though. Good player. I believe he's back at Dangerfield. Uh, mm -hmm. Can do a little bit of everything. All right, Cole, next up, arguably, not arguably, probably the biggest player in terms of the rankings coming in, Ryan Wingo, uh, the wide receiver out of St. Louis, five-star prospect, number 18 ranked, 18th ranked player nationally, elite, elite wide receiver. You've talked to Ryan. I've DM'd with him a little bit. You probably have a better feel for Ryan Wingo than I do, Cole. So what are you thinking on Ryan? Yeah, he's a guy that visited Texas, I guess that was last summer, and we kind of took a tour all around say of Texas and he left impressed with the Longhorns. Obviously the quarter, he loves the quarterback situation that Texas has. They're doing a good job uh, recruiting the receivers. He's building that relationship with Chris Jackson, but it seems like, you know, Georgia made a really big impression. Tennessee has always had some momentum there. Um, so I think there's some work to do, but again, if he's taking that official visit and kind of getting him around the coaches and back on campus, all those kind of things, it's a pretty good sign. Um, so some work to do, but I want to, count out Texas just yet until they get their shot at him. Yeah, he's visited Georgia and Michigan already. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got Texas this weekend, of course, and then Missouri. Like, I don't know if this is just kind of home cooking. Like, I randomly texted or DM'd with a Missouri source a while back, and this is about a month or so ago, and this person was like, yeah, I'll be shocked if he doesn't wind up at Missouri. So, you know, I don't know if they're just thinking that because he's a somewhat local kid, uh, you know, but – that that vibe is being kicked around in in the state of Missouri, but uh, you know, like you said, he's visited Texas before. It's actually, it's, ironically, it was right at a year ago he visited Texas. Uh, he'll be back again this weekend for an official visit. Just for a quick before we transition, I did get word back from PJ Woodland, the four star corner we were talking about earlier. He will not be in. Um, he will not be officially visiting Texas this weekend. So, kind of seems like they have made not have made the cut. Like I said, he kind of cut his list down to two. This seems to be what he's focused on. Um, yeah. Just a quick update there. Hey, good breaking news update by Cole Patterson uh, in the middle of the podcast. I like it. Um, <laughs> all right, Cole, next up, uh, Joshua Lair, who is a uh, out of Fort Bend Marshall uh, defensive back. Uh, out, of, out of Fort Bend Marshall, he'll be in this weekend. I'm not exactly sure where else he's visited, but Texas just offered him, I think it was earlier this spring, um, you know, he and I DM'd it right after that, and you know, he seemed very intrigued by the Texas offer. But uh, you know, I need to communicate with him a little more after this weekend. Maybe you know more than I do, but I don't, don't have a strong feel for where he, he might be leaning. Yeah, I don't have a total feel either, to be completely honest. Uh, but some, some, it was great when Texas offered, like he and I were bing, bing, bing back and forth, and he was coming in for a visit. So I was like, oh, I'll try to meet you out there. And then I never saw him. And then now I can't really get him to respond yeah. anymore. Maybe he took that personal. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. I thought I stood him up or something. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, I don't blame any kid who doesn't want to talk to me. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, next up, uh, big one, another big one, uh, Christian Clark, the running back, another Phoenix area kid. Well, not areas. He's literally from Mountain Point High School in Phoenix. But uh, big time running back prospect. Um, there's a lot of talk. I mean, again, I mentioned my conversation with Adam Gorney. He thinks Texas might be the team to beat there. Uh, I haven't talked to Christian, but I've talked to his coach. I'm telling you, this guy loves Texas. Florida State's heavily involved there, though. He's been to Florida State recently, but he's coming back to Texas. Texas is doing a good job kind of, uh, kind of selling him on, hey, 
you're kind of like B. John Robinson. You kind of have some similar characteristics. You could be the next B. John Robinson uh, for us in Austin. So that seems to be Probably, yeah, it means a little bit more for a kid from Arizona. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you bet. So, I mean, yeah, you say that to a kid from Florida, it's still going to carry some weight, right? But uh, you say it to a kid from Arizona where B. John's from, of course, and then it really carries some weight. He's, so he's been to Florida State already. Uh, looks like he was at Oregon last week, Texas this week. And then Georgia, and he's been to Georgia multiple times, I think on unofficial visits too. So really stiff competition for Christian Clark, but Texas is doing a good job. And I'm not ready to call Texas the leader, but I know Adam Gordon told me, hey, he thinks that one looks good for Texas and Adam's really dialed in out there. So uh, I think it's, it's always difficult to count to Char Choice out as well. You know, it seems like point. does want to take two running backs, but there's anybody that can convince two high level running backs that be in the same class as to start choice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we think the other one will probably be Jarrett Gibson who's coming in next weekend. Um, but yeah, you're, you're right. I, I, you should never count <laughs> discard count out or doubt to shard choice. He's an incredible uh, recruiter. Uh, Cole, we've got two more and you know what, as I look at it, these are two guys that I probably would predict to be in this class, this Texas class. So we'll start off uh, with Langham Creek tight end, Jordan Washington, you know, Texas offered him uh Fairly recently, this guy's stock is just blown up, man. But he's been to AM, uh, UTSA. These are official visits. He's going to be at Texas this weekend, Arizona State. Looks like he's at Alabama, excuse me, to end the, um, end the month. So, I mean, heavy competition. But I'm telling you, man, when I talked to him, this is a guy who told me, he, he's like, dude, when I grew up, like my walls were all plastered with University of Texas stuff. I had a Longhorn blanket. I mean, this guy grew up. And sometimes that's almost a kiss of death a little bit. <laughs> It's kind of a running joke on Orange Bloods when a guy says, oh, Texas is my dream school. <laughs> all of our subscribers are like, oh, great. We're not getting him. Dream <laughs> death death wish or right. dreaded words of de of a dream school. But I don't know. I think, you know, I think there's work to be done because his stock is really blown up. And, you know, AM did a good job, obviously, Alabama. But I just got a sneaky suspicion. I think Texas is in a pretty good spot there. He's a kind of got kid, as you mentioned, kind of blown up a little bit as well. You know, there's got some really big offers. So, you know, maybe when push comes to shove, that was uh, Texas fandom growing up as a Texas fan pays off. Yeah, maybe so. And we, we got to get him ranked. He's not even done ever. Right. That's how under the radar he was until yeah. about a month or two ago. And he just. Sorry, that's already in the works. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Says rivals.com regional analyst Cole Patterson. Yes. <laughs> All right, Cole, the last one. And I'm telling you, man, I've been saying for a while, like, again, people need to remember this name, but. Melvin Hills, the defensive lineman at a Lafayette Christian Academy. You and I talked to him. It was at, was it a junior day? It was yeah, he came you. in January and he came again in March. Okay. And we talked to him out and he said it then. He goes, Hey, it's Texas and Georgia are his top two. Um, you know, I'm not sure how strongly Georgia is going to push there. I still think it looks really good for Texas. I, I think I believe he was at Ole Miss recently, Cole. Am I right on that? Do you remember? I think he was as well. Yeah. I think he took an Ole Miss visit. So you got to keep an eye on Ole Miss. But if Texas and Georgia were his top two, yeah, he visited Ole Miss. So you got to factor them in. If Georgia's not really pushing, Texas is bringing him in. I mean, that, that those signs seem to point to Texas to me a little bit. Texas likes him a lot. Obviously, like you said, he did, he's been on campus multiple times this year already. So obviously, some guy that Bo Davis is really high on. Yeah, this will be his third visit. So, uh, uh, you know, another, like I said, defensive lineman out of uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. So um, dip, dipping into that uh, SEC region again for both, yeah. for both of you. So, all right, Cole, we have rattled them off, and this has turned into a 30-minute fruit cast. Uh, something what, did, what did I say then before we started recording? <laughs> about 30 minutes or something like that, yeah. And I was like, oh, we'll blow through real quickly, and still, <laughs> still took 30 minutes. But, a lot of kids uh, to talk about. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. And uh, all right, Cole, you know what? I'm, I'm going to let you all, let you get out of here and go do your uh, Rivals.com chores. But you know what, <laughs> folks, I lied. I may be I may be hitting Cole up again next week. We've got another huge weekend, and it's yeah, I always yeah. love to get Cole's opinions on uh, on some of these guys coming in. So, um, And then maybe I'll give Cole a little bit of space from <laughs> the fruit cast. But, uh, Cole, first off, thanks to everybody for watching. Support our sponsor, Prime Shrimp. You see him at the top. Uh, thanks to Blake, our producer behind the scenes, who – uh, kind of keeps these things flowing and cleans up my mistakes when I make a mistake. 
And thank you, Cole, big time for coming in. Uh, Cole didn't have to be here today, folks, but he is very generous with his time. And Cole's just a good dude, man. So we appreciate him being here. So, um, all right, everybody, hey, have a great week, a great weekend, the rest of your week. Have a great weekend. We'll have coverage on orangebloods.com. Cole will have some rivals.com national coverage on some of these visitors and everything else going on in the region from Cole. So stay tuned for all that. And recruiting is really about to start heating up. So stay tuned to orangebloods.com and, of course, the crew cast. So have a great week. Take care.